Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. I have been blessed with the opportunity to get to fish another of Mossy Oak's great properties. And it's extra special because I got my good friend Luther Cyphers from Yak Attack here. And here's the deal, Luther. The last time we were here, I had one of the best days in bass fishing I've ever had in my life. In fact, it probably was the best day that I've ever had for a combination of quantity and quality. Tim Rogers and I put over 300 fish in the boat in about eight hours. Both of us had bass thumb that looked like hamburger meat and we finished the day off with a bass pushing 12 pounds on a topwater whopper plopper. Fish of a lifetime for me on that oh kind of God. bait. The setup, the end of the day, you had fished hard, really is wishing we had that big fish. Oh, Got it, bottom God. of the night. You know, like you, like when you're a kid throwing the ball up in the backyard. Unbelievable. If that's indicative of what we got in store for us today, this is gonna be a great day on the water, man. That Looking forward to, to getting you your personal best. That sounds great. Getting some boat up rods, hooting and hollering, having a good time. Let's do it. Let's go see what it has in store. Nice fish. Yeah! Yes, sir! All right, so we came up into this timber here. First cast over here. Picked up this nice, nice fatty. Uh, what a great fish for a first cast. Nice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dude, look at these fish. Oh, nice. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Okay, all right. Nice to meet you, too. Ugh. Man, these things are built like little tanks. God damn. The genetics in these property lakes is sick. Another nice little mossy oak bass. So there's a lot of timber up in here. Just working these little pockets. Um, just really just feeling the jig on the bottom, uh, bouncing through the, the treetops that are, that are sunk under here. And uh, man, we're just catching them right and left. They're just, they're just all up in that, in that submerged timber. Today is a perfect example of why fishing out of a kayak is so advantageous. I mean, many of the situations that we've been in today and the last time that I was here fishing this lake with Tim Rogers you just couldn't get up into the spots and hold position and do the things that we've been doing this place is riddled with wood that would make running a trolling motor next to impossible I mean this is one of the situations where fishing from a kayak is literally a catch them where others can't scenario I mean we're up into these tight places pitching to these holes that are choked out, fish. that would be impossible to get a full-size boat into. So just another reason why fishing from a kayak is such a, not just a cool way to fish, not just a, an effective way to fish, but almost the only alternative in some situations. Welcome back to Wilderness Systems Kayak Bassin. This week, Chad's in Alabama visiting one of Mossy Oak Properties' private lakes with his good friend, Luther Cyphers from Yak Attack. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, growing up in the Southeast, um, the name Mossy Oak is not just synonymous with, with hunting, but synonymous with a lifestyle that we lead down here. I mean, these guys live it. They eat, sleep, and breathe hunting and fishing. And um, an extension of the Mossy Oak Camouflage brand is the Mossy Oak Properties brand that, uh, that Chris Hawley and, and, uh, and Toxie oh, Hayes oh. found. Nice. Well, when we first started Mossy Oak Properties, the vision was that we wanted outdoorsmen to be able to enjoy the same things that we were enjoying. And really everything we do is really all about getting closer to nature. So with Mossy Oak Properties, we have about 73 offices. Uh, located in 22 states at this time. We've got a growing network of brokers. And the difference between the Mossy Oak Properties real estate brokerage office is that, you know, our, our folks, they live and breathe. This is a lifestyle for them. They understand the outdoors and they're, they're there trying to help 
their customers and clients be able to enjoy the same things that we do, whether it's hunting, fishing, walking trails, you know, it's more than just hunting and it's more than just fishing. It's being able to enjoy that lifestyle 365 days out of the year. So if you're looking for that property of a lifetime, look up the guys at Mossy Oak Properties, find your nearest office and they can help you find that property of a lifetime. What was that you were saying, Chad, about quality and quantity? Nice fish. I saw that fish on the log, set the jig on the log and just dropped it off the log and it hammered it. That was cool. Another solid chunk, thumping the jig. Wow. Dude, this is a big fish, but he's taking me down into a treetop. You know, I'm gonna take this segment while I still, ooh, while I still got this fish hooked up to tell you really quick. Oh, maybe he's coming out of the top. <sighs> to tell you really quick why one reason when I'm fishing a crankbait, that boat position and boat management is the biggest key. You can't get a crankbait down without holding the boat in position because it wants to draw the bait to it. One thing I do, however, when I'm fishing deep cranks as I try not to anchor or be tied off. I try to use a wedging anchor technique for reason for situations just like this where I've hooked this fish, he's taking me down into a top and he's hung up because you have to make long casts with deep cranks. So I'm gonna come over here and pass this fish, change the angle and hopefully take him out of this top. But you'll see right back there when I made the cast, I was actually wedged against a treetop. I wasn't anchor. Oh, here he goes, he's loose. That's all it takes a lot of times is just to change the angle. Oh, 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 he's still there. Sometimes you can just go slack on them and let them knock it off the limb. Ah, I think I lost him. I think he got the, le the, the lure hooked into the tree, which gave him the leverage to pull it off. Oh no, he's there. Nice. <laughs> I'll tell you what guys, the business end of this presentation is one of the most dangerous things in kayak fishing. And that's a bait laden with treble hooks and a fish slinging its head. I hand landed this fish basically because he had been tied around that tree limb and he was exhausted and I didn't have to worry too much about him kicking over. We get him back in the water and I'm gonna show you one product that you should definitely have if you're fishing these big crankbaits or any lures for that matter that have a lot of treble hooks on them. And I'm gonna tell you, this product has been responsible for me landing numerous big fish. In fact, without it, I probably would have lost the big fish that I caught here last time. One cool thing about this product is that it's got a rubberized net, so if it does have a lure with treble hooks in it, it simply pops right out. And that's a feature that you have to have on a product that you're going to be using with treble hooks because you don't want to spend half your day trying to get the hooks out. And that's this leverage landing net, um, compact design. In fact, my guest on today's show, Luther Cyphers and I, collaborated with Leverage Landing Net to design this product or to redesign their net to the product that you see here which is simply a net that folds open. It's got a forearm grip that allows you to reach down and scoop those big fish up in tight places. So, you know, I'm proud of a lot of things that I've done in this industry, but this leverage landing net compact kayak design that you can just stick down here between your legs. There's a model that has a flush mount rod holder to go behind you, or you can just lay it out in front of your feet. It's an absolute necessity when fishing big crankbaits, trying to land that fish of a lifetime and avoid losing them right beside the boat. Check out the Leverage Landing Net Kayak Compact Model at Hook1 at kayakfishinggear.com. Welcome back to Wilderness Systems Kayak Bassin. This week, Chad Hoover is fishing some of Mossy Oak Property's private lakes in Alabama with his good friend, Luther Cyphers from Yak Attack. Okay, so I was on the phone with Chris Hawley, 
when I hooked up a big six pounder on the other lake. I'm gonna put the phone down for just a second so I can film this. It's a good one. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> nice, oh! But he threw out the offer to try out another one of Mossy Oaks private lakes and we jumped at the chance. We loaded up our gear, made the short trek, and we're here at another one of the small ponds. We're gonna jump in here and see if we can find a hog in one of these backwoods ponds Mossy Oak Properties has to offer. Three o'clock, bright and sunny, hot, blasting top waters. This hey, this one don't have a watch. He doesn't know what time it is. That's why he's still hitting top water. Bass ain't got no arms. Can't tell what time it is. That's why they don't know they're not supposed to be hitting topwater right now. Yeah, so the last couple of years have been pretty, pretty exciting at Yak Attack. In 2011, it was my wife and I part-time. Oh, yeah. And as of right now, we have six full-time and uh, about six part-time people. The other thing that's changed a lot in the last couple of years is Yak Attack has really went from a, a very grassroots, um, you know, some some guys that were trying some different stuff that, uh, you know, people were, were, were starting to use to really part of the fabric of the kayak fishing community and of the sport itself. And I can't tell you what a Little humbling experience that's been. I've always heard people say that, you know, success or something that good it, that happens is, is humbling and I've never quite understood what that meant until the last couple of years and I and I really can relate to it because there's times when you just you know with the way the sport has reached out I mean just arms wide open to yak attack um, from the customers to the the boat manufacturers um, everybody it's been an incredible experience you know, fishing really thick surface vegetation like this is frustrating for a lot of folks. And I think a lot of it's got to do with not knowing how to fish it. And uh, one thing that makes it really easy is choosing the right bait, like this Zoom Horny Toad that I'm throwing, or, or any of your toads that skim across the surface. But the key is to not make a lob cast where the bait lands and punches down in there and gets hung, hung up from the get-go. You want to make a long, straight cast, a line drive cast without any arc, and as soon as the bait's about to hit the water, you want to stop the line and be raising your tip as the lure hits the water so that it lands and it hits the water moving forward. That way, you keep a lot of the grass off your bait. It comes through there. It never gets bound up, and you're basically skimming it right across the top, and you get those fish instead of getting frustrated. <sighs> like that. Like that, and like that. Thank you for making that little cameo appearance right during the middle of my tip, little bassy. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the Yak Attack products that we're using out on the water today. At the heart and soul of the Yak Attack mounting system is our T-bolt connection. We call the Mighty Bolt. And basically this is a threaded T-bolt that goes into the, the bottom of the device and you attach it to either our gear track or our Mighty Mount and just by rotating the device, it tightens up and gives you a secure attachment. So the gear track is a track system. It gives you a lot of adjustability. The Mighty Mount is more of a, a standalone single point of attachment, but they both connect the same way. Um, and then here we have this, the park and pole stakeout pole. And basically this is a, a way to secure your boat in, in wind or in moving water. You can just stick it through what we've got here is an anchor trolley set up. We can jam it through there or you can put it through a scupper on the boat. Now looking towards the back of the boat. So again, we've got the mighty mount and what we've got attached here is a, is a screw ball. What the screw ball is, is it's a, a ball that's compatible with RAM mounting systems. RAM makes a tremendous amount of rod holders and electronic mounts and just pretty much anything you can imagine. 
And then here we have the black pack. This is a, a basically a crate management system. It gives you a place to put your tackle, but it also gives you a place to attach your, your gear. Um, here we've got a little electronics cradle. And then here we've got the, uh, the pan fish. Again, this is a ca camera mount that has the pivoting head. This is more for taking over the shoulder um, video. On the back of the black pack, we've got three rod holders. Um, the black pack will actually accommodate up to 10. So if you want to take your entire arsenal out on the water, it'll accommodate that. And then inside, we've got lots of room for, um, you know, tackle boxes, leader material, an anchor, whatever you need to put in there. So this is what we're using today. We've got a lot more that you can check out at www.yakattack.us. Welcome back to Wilderness Systems Kayak Bassett. Having had an incredible day with Mossy Oak Properties, Chad and Luther have decided to move one more time and shoot for the fences on Dream Lake. Oh yeah, dude, that's a nice fit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well guys, we've made the move to Dream Lake. And on the first cast, Luther is hooked up with a pig. <laughs> First cast, baby, what's up? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I was asking Chad if he thought this thing was gonna push six pounds, actually put the bogo on it, six and a half pounds. That's my personal best bass out of a kayak. Really happy with this fish. We pulled up on this rock pile and uh, the wind was just pushing us around this morning. Trying to, trying to finesse baits on the bottom, on the rock. So dropped the parking pole in, held us in position was able to, to work the bait the way I wanted to, and nice fish, what a beautiful fish. Oh! Netter. Yes! <laughs> Check that out. She is knocking the pincher off, coming back and almost ripped the second one off before she thumped the bait. These big oversized pinchers are calling these, causing these bass to really hit that bait and try to take that crawfish's defenses before they eat it. I felt that little thump and a rip. The bait moved, dropped my rod tip. She came back and thumped it again, set the hook. Nice little fat bass, look at that tail. Probably starting to recover. Now there's still some really red blood in there. So they're fanning the beds. You know, it should be over here, but with this crazy weather, these bass are still fanning the beds. It's a real good fish. Another Alabama beauty. So I got back on another rock pile here, switched over to a, to a 3 8 ounce football jig with a crawl trailer, black and blue, and I uh, picked up another nice, another nice fish off the rocks. This guy went about five pounds. Let's get this fish back in the water. Boom! All right, let me give you a quick tip on how to make bass look bigger in photos. First and foremost, when you hold the bass up and their dorsal fin is laid down, the fish doesn't look as broad across the back. A really quick way to make every bass look bigger is to utilize the dorsal fin up button located on the bottom side of every bass. They're color-coded red, so they're easy to find. Simply hold the bass up for your shot, Press that button and voila, the bass sticks its dorsal fin up and looks twice as big. Try the, try the dorsal fin up button next time you take a photo of your bass to make it look even bigger for your buddies. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for spending another great day on the water with us. Luther, I'll tell you what, man, I had a blast. Oh man, what a great day, Chad. I appreciate it. Got my personal best out of a kayak. 
Couldn't ask for a better day. I'll tell you what, guys, if you're looking to customize your kayak to make it your own, you can't go wrong by going with Yak Attack. So check out all the products available from Yak Attack at yakattack.us. You're going to see Luther again. You're going to see me again next week. Thanks for joining us on this episode for a whole bunch of kayak bass fishing. Hey, guys, if you're a kayak fisherman like I am, visit Hook One at kayakfishinggear.com for all your kayak fishing gear needs. <laughs> Look at that thing.